Hi everyone, Queeveen here from the comfort of my kitchen. In today's video, we are going to take a look at Earth's second moon, or at least our temporary second moon. So in a recent previous video, I talked about some of the classes of near-Earth objects. There are a few objects that go around the sun near the Earth's orbit or with the ability to cross the Earth's orbit. A lot of near-Earth objects, their orbits come close to the Earth. They don't necessarily come very close to the Earth. This object does get pretty close to the Earth. Uh, it's a lot less than an AU, and you can see it's almost exactly an AU from the Sun. This object, asteroid PT5, is quite close to the Earth, or at least it is at the moment. So let's see if we can get anything popping up here. Oh, uh, yeah, the orbit is showing up as it should be, and yes, we are seeing a little ball of rock there. So this asteroid, as you can see, it's very, very faint, so it would take a telescope or a very big pair of binoculars to see this. I don't know if it's written down here anywhere, but this object is just, yeah, two kilometers. Uh, I think it might actually be a little bit less than two kilometers across. It's quite a small object and it is orbiting the sun in a position that brings it quite close to the earth so we can see here as we move through time uh, there is the comet uh, which i will get to in a future video we can see here as we move through time that its distance from the earth uh, it decreases to its minimum back around here somewhere uh, and then increases again as the object continues its own orbit around the sun the reason this object has been called Earth's second moon is because it does temporarily uh, get affected by our orbit. So this object will temporarily orbit the Earth. It will move in such a way as that it seems to be going around the Earth, uh, but it doesn't have a real normal orbit of the Earth. Uh, this object will be deflected by the Earth's gravity, but it's not completely getting trapped by our gravity. Uh, before we head out into space to take a look at the orbit from above, we will head out into the countryside. And with such a faint magnitude, it's not going to be visible to the naked eye, but we'll get a little bit later, a little bit darker. Of course, the moon is pretty close to full there. We'll get the moon out of the sky just to make things a little bit better. So we're seeing it here. It's a little further away from us, you know, uh, almost. Uh, half a million kilometers away. So it's way out here, pretty close to the North Star. Uh, so having a look around the plow should help. And yeah, with enough magnification, there we go as an object in the sky. So it is really, really high up in the sky, which helps. But because it is such a small object, even if it gets quite close to us, it's going to be incredibly, incredibly difficult to see. Uh, we'll go and take a look at this object from out in space. Here we go. Uh, so we'll go out to the Solar System Observer again. Um, I did this recently in a previous video to take a look at the ob orbits of other near-Earth objects. There we go. Now that's the Sun. I need to get back into asteroid PT5. There we go. And we can see there's its orbit very, very close to the Earth's orbit. And we can see, if we zoom in down here, pretty close to the Earth, but further from the Earth than the Moon. So we can see the Moon there with the Earth and then this second Moon. So if we move back in time here, we can see pretty close approach there, uh, the distance 29 AU, uh, I'm not sure what that's measuring the distance from because it's certainly not the distance from the Earth. Uh, it's the distance from our current location way above the solar system, that makes sense. Uh, so we can see there that it gets pretty close to the Earth. So this object, its motion through space was influenced by the Earth's gravity and will be influenced by the Earth's gravity, but it is an independent object. So we can see here, it pretty much looks like it's orbiting the Earth. It um, goes around the Earth here. So we can see that it almost makes a complete circle around the Earth. It goes through an orbit, almost. So we'll keep moving back in time and see how it flies off into space. There we go. So way, way, way back here, 
uh, back in the beginning of 2024. Its orbit has disappeared. We are looking pretty far into the past here. Uh, Sclerium will only calculate orbits uh, sometimes, uh, usually when they're known uh, to a certain degree. And this is after becoming unknown because it's uh, too far in the past. This object was only discovered in 2024. Uh, so anything too far in the past is going to be kind of hypothetical. We didn't observe it going through this motion. But it's orbiting around the sun. It's doing its own thing. Uh, it comes pretty close to the Earth in its orbit around the sun. We can see that here. And then it starts to get affected by the Earth's gravity. It's essentially pulled around the Earth. And we can see it here starting to make that orbit pretty close approach to the Earth. We can see it going ahead of the Earth here, getting pulled back around the earth by our gravity and so this is now looking into the future about a year into the future pretty close uh, we can see there it's going to be almost in line with the moon potentially almost in line with the full moon but i would have to zoom to confirm and then we can see yeah now its orbital uh, properties are unknown but it's going further and further away from the earth so it is only a temporary satellite we can see for that couple of months that it is going around the earth it is influenced by our gravity but it's not completely captured by our gravity it will fly away again into space so coming back up pretty close to today's date we'll get pretty close to today's date somewhere around here uh so we can see that it is between us and the sun here uh in terms of Looking down at the solar system as if it were a flat plane, it looks like this object is closer to the sun than we are. And based on these, you know, kind of concentric rings, if we were measuring straight out from the sun on a flat plane, it's definitely closer to the sun than we are. And we can see it is a little closer to the sun than we are there. But this object isn't orbiting the ecliptic perfectly. Its orbit is a little bit more inclined than the orbit of a lot of the planets. So let's hop back to Cork. Uh, yes, quarter past nine, sun should be down. There we go, and we are looking at a dark sky, there it is. So we can see that from our perspective here on Earth, even if we come back to daytime, it's so high off the ecliptic, it's going to look like it's way, way above the sun, uh, from us here in the northern hemisphere at least. So it is between us and the sun, but way higher off the ecliptic than we'd expect, uh, for example, for a planet. So let's go back here. There it is. Uh, we'll get nice and close to midnight. If I go too early in the night, then moving back towards summertime will bring us back into daytime. The closer we are to the middle of the night here, the better. Oh, things moving a little bit too quickly there. Um, that is bringing us back to sunset. There we go. Pretty close to midnight. Where is it? There it is. Uh, PT5. So let's go back in time here and see when it comes to its closest approach according to Stellarium. There we go. Uh, so passing within, oh, it seems to hit a minimum there, about 6.6, six, uh, so just under a million. Um, so there it is at 18.3. Even at its closest, it was still super, super faint. Uh, so if you missed asteroid PT5 at its closest approach to us, there it is really looking like an asteroid there, of course, significantly closer than where we're seeing it today. If we move through time, we can see that it's there drifting away from us again. And we can see that lovely half shape there because we're pretty much looking up at its underneath, looking up at its sort of uh, bottom side while its front faces the sun. Of course, you know, up, down, top, bottom, they don't really matter that much when you're in space. And I don't know the rotational axis of this uh, temporary second moon that we have, but here we go. Oh, it seemed to reach another uh, close approach. This would be not its closest approach. It's significantly further away than the closest approach it had earlier in the year. Uh, these jumping up and down uh, is causing me to lose track of where I'm supposed to look on the screen. Uh, yeah, that did appear to be its minimum. Uh, so there, yeah, just around there. There we go. Uh, that looks to be the smallest number I'm going to get. And this is... January. So we can see that it's not as close as the closest approach it had at the beginning of this year, but it is closer on the 8th of January 2025 than it currently is uh, for us here at the end of October 2024. So we are going to have this temporary mini moon 
for quite a while, a couple of months. That's a long time for something to be temporarily affected by the Earth, especially if it's not going to be stably orbiting us. We haven't really captured it. It will fly away again. But thankfully, we've got a little bit of time to observe it. And there it is. Uh, so there's the plow, the North Star. And there we've got our temporary moon. Uh, looks like it's just at the front of Ursa Minor, uh, next to the tail of Draco. So that's where we're going to have to look over the next little bit of time to see it, at least. So I hope you enjoyed this little video dealing with our temporary second moon. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to like it. And you can subscribe to this YouTube channel to support future videos. You can also read a little bit of this information on my website, readingscontent.ie. And hopefully, I'll see you back here next time.